Welcome to another episode, and I'm excited about this one. Hold on, let me use my deep voice because it's about 12.52 in Hungary. This is the late night version, and we have the first world champion in the women's discus. Welcome to the show. Talk to me, baby. What you got? Oh. Uh. This is my first time uh, winning anything, so I'm just I'm just happy to be here. I'm just so happy. I don't even know. I might not sleep tonight. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm up. It's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. It is Wednesday. <laughs> so uh, I heard through the grapevine, aka social media, you just didn't want to come in 12th place. Very much so. It's so disrespectful to do well um, in a qualifying and then look stupid in the final. Because at that point, I'm running, I'm running as well if not showed up. Right. Um, and so when I was walking in on my third throw, I only had a 52 to my name. And I looked back, you know, and they got your little credential picture, and it just said 12th place. And I was like, don't do me like that, please. This is my third time, Lord. And then I just looked at my discus and I was like, balls to the wall. Like, we got to go. Like, it's either I foul this left sector or I, or I get another three throws. And so I was, as soon as I hit that 65, I got, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, he heard me. Thank you, Jesus. Like, you he worked in mysterious ways, but he expedited. You know what I'm saying? He expedited my prayer. For so, nothing is impossible with God. In Jesus' name. And not Luke today, Satan. Luke 137. Not today. That's your favorite Bible verse, huh? Which one? Luke 137. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. I'm actually getting back into reading yeah, the Bible. Yeah, I was just talking to somebody into, about yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's been bad. I said it's it's therapy plus Bible because something is going on. So. Well, I think that um, it's fitting that you were in the position that you were in. I watched every single throw you took today, oh FYI. Um, and you threw 70 meters out of the sector. What? Yeah, and from my opinion. You know, oh I don't know what, God. what the God would say, but you filed a further throw out of the sector than uh then obviously you got into the sector today. Um and it was your fourth throw. Damn. Uh they you would agree- so I, I got some nods in the room so somebody else agrees with me who was watching. Uh and at that moment I was just like, oh my goodness, this is before you threw sixty nine meters, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh she's about to win. Like, you know, obviously you made the, you know, the next three, the final three mm-hmm. throws. But I was like, you know, whoa, she's about to win. And you threw, obviously, 69-49. And Degada, your coach, went berserk. Crazy. He jumped up I thought on the, honey, the ledge. And uh, yeah. just, like, I was like, I've never seen him like that. I've that seen man. him in rare form, but not like that. Okay. I thought the Hungarian Special Forces yeah. was going to take he him He jumped on me. Yeah. I said, hey, he... I was like, ain't no way a grown man just jumped on me like a child. I was and like, and okay. at this point, the competition wasn't, I mean, you hadn't secured winning the competition. Oh, no, point. not yet. Not I, at all. I, um, I, knew, I knew in that moment that I could celebrate, but Val was, Val was on my She was. Because one thing about Val, she be responding. So I was uh, but she, no nah, man, look, talk yeah, to me. Talk, 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 talk to me. Talk to me about these throws. I want to hear your story about these throws tonight because I've never watched that. Was like watching a movie. I saw ups and downs, yeah. plot twists, and love story. Talk to me. So I went into the competition and I was just, again, I told somebody, I said, if I just get anything but 12, 12th place, I am going to turn up because I'm so tired of seeing that one and that two. From Oregon and Doha. And I was like, I was like, anything but 12. And I was like, I'm going to be so happy. And I had a deep, a deep foul in the qualifying round. And I was just like, uh, who was it? Ar- Ariana Ince. She's my roommate. So she told me, she goes, she's seen the video and she goes, I want you to do well. She's like, I really do. I just, I just really don't want you to have your own room because I'm not gonna have a roommate. And I was like, "Oh, you think I'm gonna <laughs> win?" And I was like, "That is so sweet." And um, and I told her I was like, "It don't matter though because if it's anything but 12, I'm going to be inebriated because I'm so tired of looking at that 12th place." But I uh, I went in there and then again I already seen it. I was gonna be 12, and I did a static, and I PR'd, and I was like, "Okay," at that point. I'm gonna go crazy. I'm gonna go stupid. Like I'm so the guy that pulls me aside, rough as hell, he grabs me and he's like, 
it's, it's time for you to go. Like, put a full backswing in. And I'm like, okay, keep in mind, I, I've only done that one time and that was at USA. You know what I'm saying? To get that big 65. So I haven't I haven't really done much like that before. And um, so I go, and I the one that you said was so far out, i like, damn. I was like, I, I don't know. And then he told me, he was like, just do it again. Yeah. So when I when I went to go do it again, I just seen it kept going. Like there was no stop. It just kept going. And I was like, oh my God. Like my knees gave out. Yeah. Like they both cracked snackle pop on the way down. And I was just like, oh my God. I just did that. You gotta reenact that at some point too. We need to see that. <laughs> Okay. Please, please, but don't hurt yourself. Okay. You, you, you literally still have your USA uniform yeah. with bib. your bib on. This bib. is a yeah. first for this podcast. I just want to go on record and let people know that. I just got yeah. out of the we control. Don't, Tell me about the last three bars. throws, though. Um, okay, so, like, again, that that uh, that fourth round throw, I was like, okay, something's building. Fourth Something, round was a foul. Building. Yes, but it was building, and I was like, okay. You really watched this. I was sitting right there, front oh, row. Man. Really? Oh, I was so sick. Like I, I felt, I felt like I could throw up and shit at the same time. I was so sorry. <laughs> I just, I was, I was so stuck. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I, I wasn't feeling well. And you looked disgusted I, to I, me. Like you look, I saw you grab the towel and you did like a, a dry throw. Yeah, a little bit I was like, and you damn. Were just trying I was to like, figure please God. I was like, don't do this to me, please. I'm sitting yeah. there and I look crazy as hell on camera because I'm like, please God, don't do this to me. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the man upstairs right now. I'm like, like, call me back on the main line right now because I need to have a conversation because this is getting ridiculous. And then the second throw comes out, right? And when I, uh, like, it wasn't even like, it was so emotional that like, they just knocked knees. It just, mm, and went down in the circle. And then I had to get back up and I had bad knees. So I'm I'm creaking to get back up. And it was like, it's so emotional. Yeah, help me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> help me because I'm hurting, <laughs> okay? Right now, like right. emotionally, but my kneecaps is gone. Like they smoked out. They just, <laughs> like, <laughs> There's no more. Like the the whole cap is gone. And I get out and I'm like, okay, and I have bad eyesight. So I'm I'm sitting staring at the board and I'm like, damn. Okay. And then I see 69. I didn't, I didn't even see the rest of the thing. I just saw 69. I must have ran the fastest 20 meter dash of my life. It was like 15. It was like 15. It was like 15. But you was out. You was out. You was moving through through there. Yeah, I was watching. And I was like, like, oh my goodness. I I could not believe what just happened. Like when it left my hand, I was like, yep. And you went from from 12th place to what? I went from 12th to 5th to 1st. Right. In two rounds. So I, when I sat there, I was like, oh my God. I was like, I could actually win this thing. And then we get into, because this is the fifth round. I'm in the sixth round. I'm like, damn. I got the Olympic champion and I got the world champion. I got the Olympic champion and the world champion right before me. And I'm like, the The bubble guts is at an all-time high. Like, I explained it to Wallace earlier. It was like my my booty sheets were like this. They would just, you know what I'm saying? They just stuck. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I have never, like... It was so puckered. I was just so scared. I was just sitting there like this. I was like, God. I was like, I was like, please don't take me out of a middle standing. If it's not first, I better not get fourth because the girls go crazy. So, bang, bingo. I'm like, okay. She out the way, God damn it. That's fine. And then there's Val. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, if there's nobody you want to underestimate, it is Valerie Allman, because she is that girl, and she been that girl. And I was like, I want you to do well, but I also- mm, mm, I, But I want to do yeah, better. I want right. to do better. Because like, I just I just had the most like craziest, I don't even know, like you said it was a movie. It was. Like, it was, it not was even a movie, it was dramatic. so fast, it was like a music video. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it starts off bad, but it ends up so good with a good chorus and everything at the end. Um. So I was just sitting there and I was like, just again, just, uh, just tight. <laughs> and so, and then she hits one and I'm like, Lord, oh, I'm like, this is it. I just release. I'm like, oh God. I'm like, it's going to say 70. And then it says 68. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, 
I just became a world champion. So I'm 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 sniffling and I'm getting into the ring because I'm like you felt something right here. Yeah, you know what I'm <clears throat> like I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to <clears throat> get get it because the cameras is on me now. And then I hear the announcer talking about uh, this this your world champion. I'm like shut the hell up, please God. <laughs> like I'm so weak, like my knees hurt. Um, I was like my stomach my stomach is all over the place. And I was like, oh, God, the lights is bright. I'm staring at the stadium lights. I'm like, oh, my God, like, this is real. Um, and I go in, and I can't even see at this point. My eyes are so watered up. And I just, I let another one loose. And then I see in it's 68 again. And you were crying when you threw it? Yes. Yeah. Have you ever done that before? No. I, I, I came in that bathroom. I said, I got all the snot I could, because if I don't, it, you know, I'm just going to wrap out the nose. It happened before. You know what I'm saying? It happened in qualifying. After I hit my throat, I'm like, damn, I got it. So it's happened before. So I'm sitting like, and I'm backing up, and I'm like, okay, I, I got to let go. Then I let go. I'm like, and I let that thing go. I'm like, oh, God. He chose me. God chose me. Okay, he chose me. People will say, you know, based on viewing the competition, that Valerie underperformed. Um, but really, you overperformed. Uh, you, you were the only person to PR in the competition. There were a few seasons best, but you, you really were at your best. Uh, at a moment where you were faced with the greatest adversity because you almost didn't make the final three. Like, literally, you mm -hmm. made your third throw, 65-56. You know, you kind of went from not being in the final three to being in the final three, and you seized the moment. Uh, you know, you came back with the foul, and then you, you, you decided to throw that thing farther than anybody else in the field. Now, I watched... Uh, you, you seem to be shocked... Yes. That not that you threw that far is, but more shocked that nobody was able to respond. Uh, I think it was a little bit of both, right? And I think it's very disrespectful, right, for someone to say that Valerie underperformed because that's her mo. Her mo is to be sixty-seven plus, mm -hmm. and there's no other girls really doing that right now. Mm -hmm. So like, they have to put some respect on that, like respect her for that like she's amazing so it's not that she didn't respond like Val's doing Val and so like I just I just had one you know what I'm saying and throw you her head two. all the time you had two because, Fair or, or three I mean you fouled one that was a, a pretty decent throw but yeah. you also threw on your last throw 68-36 which I mean third place was she threw 68-20. Yeah. So at even, you know, your second best throw would have got you on the podium. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I I do believe that. I just I just feel like cuz cuz throwers say like it only takes one, right? Some like and, and that's what's happened because this season when I when I tell you it's been a dumpster fire. Um like it's been so bad and um like I I was like I was going into the USA's and I was like, "Well, <laughs> here we go." Cause I couldn't, I couldn't throw down the sector to save my life. If the California lottery was on the line and they said just get one in, I was going to live under a bridge. Like I, couldn't, I couldn't throw in between those two lines. It was difficult. And if I did, I couldn't even touch the first line at that sixty meter. And so when I hit that sixty five, I left with a new purpose. And I was like, okay, I hit sixty five. I was like, how much more can I push? You know, I was like, we're at the tail end of the season. How much How much more can I put into it? And so that went into weeks of preparation. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any other meets. You know, there's some people trying to do some small things between worlds. I was like, you need to sit down and think about what you just did because we got to make it repeatable. And so I had seen some of those numbers in practice, but it's just not real sometimes, you know? Like, you're like, oh, like, that's right. Like, that's, that's, that's the throw. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, but it's not real. You know, you can measure practice throws all you want, but I'm not trying to be a practice champion. Right. Like I'm, you know. You're trying to be a world champion. Well, you're yeah. not trying to be a world champion. You <laughs> exactly. are a world you champion. Are. Yeah, you are a world and champion. And so I was like, okay, like, all right. So I went through qualifying with the breeze and I was like, again, I had a big foul in there and then I, I responded with the second one. And so the biggest thing that the God had told me when he pulled me over after that, that throw that went out was, he goes, the second throw was always better. And so I was like, okay, I'm. I'm gonna hit it like I'm. I'm. I'm gonna take the lid off and hit the turbo button. Like I'm gonna just go. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if it does something. And if I look stupid, I'm like, oh well. We had a 65. Whatever. Like mm -hmm. nobody can take that away from me. Mm -hmm. I'm not 12th place. Nobody can talk to me. Um. And 
And then so when it when it hit, I like again, I wasn't respectfully, it wasn't that I was shocked that nobody responded, right? Or 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 that I just did so well. I just wasn't also expecting it to be that far. Because I didn't know, you know, that that one outside that could have been 70. I was just like, that could have been 66. You know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of athletes do that. a lot farther than 66. Yeah. But we always shortchange ourselves because we don't want to seem too cocky, right? Yeah. So I was like, nah, man. But when I seen it disappear, like I legit seen that thing, bloop. I said, like, oh, it's gone. And then it fell out the sky and I was like, oh, okay. It's back. <laughs> um, and so I was like, oh, I'm hype. Like, yeah, like I'm, I'm going to get a medal for sure now. You know, like I was just, I didn't care. It could be, it could be that bronze and I was going to sit there and fall asleep kissing it. Like I was like, that's it. That's mine. That's, that's, that's the love of my life right there. So when I seen that 69, I was, I was jumping for joy. I promise you, I could have, I could have jumped in that, that long jump competition or that, that, uh, high jump. High high jump. jump that, there we go. That high jump. Everybody let a high jump. Man. Yeah. Man, I was in, I could have been in there. I, I think so could too. Have. I, I got a question for you. Mm. So I'll say, throughout your career, you said you finished 12th place. You know, you've had some challenging finishes. Yeah. What is this? Have you, or have you even thought about what this is going to do for you in your future? Financially, you know, with your family, with your confidence, like how does this set you up for the future? I mean, this is a pretty big payday. I never got first in my career, so you're gonna have to tell me what it feels like. <laughs> Looking forward to putting that check in the I, bank account, babe. Man, I, um, I didn't realize. I was just like, oh my gosh, like I'm a world champion, and then the guy to come, he slapped me in my back. He goes. You just made so much money. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I started feeling good about myself. I was like, uh, like, I'm going to go buy me a couple more, like, stuff for my hair. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Look, I can't even wear acrylics. I'm going to head him on. Like, I'm going to be in there. Like, I didn't even know. I was just like, I don't even know what I'm going to spend it on. Like, I'm so excited. Um, But in all reality, I was, like, thinking about, I'm, 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 one of those girls now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's times where you're like, dang, they get appearance fees, right? Or, or, or damn, like you're not they one get of those a, girls. You are that girl. Yeah, yeah you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like, oh, they get a deal. I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, you know, um, I'm trusting the good, like the, the, the process and, and the good fight. Um, and then it's just like on that one throw, my life did a 180. Like it completely turned, and I was just like. Like when people were talking to me about things, I was like, that's me. Like, yes, I can agree I won that medal, but I didn't think I, in my mind that I was deserving of everything that's going to come from that because I've been struggling. Right. Like, and people are like, well, like you had a decent season coming out of college. And it's like, yeah, but like it's hard to make money in this sport. It, yeah. it, it really is. And so, like, yeah, I was doing fine, but like, that's, you know. This is like while I said like it's it's a big it's a big like payday, um. Like I just I don't even know where to start. Like I I don't even know what to do with that. Like I would like I hate to say it, but I just didn't think I was gonna ever get that. So so now we onward, right? I mean, you're a world champion, so you guarantee uh, uh, first class. Well, maybe not first class. I'm not sure. Uh, but you guaranteed a ticket to Tokyo in 2025. Man. You know, Man. you're going. So, you, you know, that's a huge relief. You know you're going to the next world championship. Yes. Um, so the only preparation left for you is, you know, to take that visit to the Eiffel Tower, you know, and and, and, and see the streets of Paris. Um, what is what is preparing for that look like for you now? And, and what does this, you know, do to propel your confidence? You know, because you talk a lot about in this podcast, you uh, <laughs> seemingly developing that confidence, right? Um, transitioning from thinking you are to knowing you are. Mm -hmm. um, and that, it's clearly, it hasn't even been 24 hours, so this might be a little over the top of a question <laughs> as it relates to that. But um, what what is what are the next steps in your development uh, look like? I know your coach. He's crazy. Uh, <laughs> and Not I feel lie. sorry <laughs> Honestly, for all the other throws coaches out there who have to listen to him talk about this for the next 72 years, okay? For the oh, next 15 years or however, like he's never going to live this. 
Bronco Degada is never gonna let us die. Nah, nah, nah. He never gonna, you know, he never gonna let it. He might put your name on the license plate in the Bronco. You know, he's never gonna, you know, forget this and, and live this down. And I just wanna know, you know, what is uh what do the next steps look like for you in your maturation and development? Because you really are truly transitioning from thinking um you're deserving of being to knowing you are uh, a world champion and, and obviously the next pursuit is to add an Olympic medal to that resume. So I remember after USA's um, Bashir, um, Chris Bernard's, well, one of the coaches that works with Chris Bernard told me something that was just like really good. He said, um, in a sense that like, do exactly what you've been doing, right? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like a lot of times people are like, well, I got to go crazy now. And so like you lose, you lose the basics, right? And so um, that's that's what happened. Like that preparation from USA's, like I literally structured my days and the way that I lifted after USA's because I knew that's what worked and that's how it's gonna happen. So with the stuff that I have now, right? Or I'm going to have because of the situation, I think it's going to be funded into, you know, not like at a higher level of maintaining the things that already made me good. So, you know, it's it's not a situation of like, oh, like, I don't know, like better facilities or this or that. It's like, no, like putting it into the things that will truly, you know, like maybe like better better travel, right? Because travel is a real big thing. Like I can't I can't be I can't be sitting in them regular seats. <laughs> My shoulders cover two chairs. The I'm up a room. I'm sitting like, like this. I'm like, gosh. So it's 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 in the smaller things because I want to keep the basics as perfect and as simple as possible. Because when I tried to expand entirely too fast in the beginning of the season, the house of cards just fell down. So it's like I had to slowly build it back up. And I think that's the beauty of recognizing where you came from and where you're going to go because you want to make sure that you keep the integrity in the basics. And I think that's something that I, again, I talked to the guy about, I was like, look, I was like, the statics, the statics are the thing, right? Yeah, that 69 wouldn't have been possible without that 65. It wouldn't have been possible without the the crying and, and all the messed up stuff that happened over the season where I just couldn't get it right from those statics and they were terrible. Like, though, all of those led up to that moment. So, like, I'm not going to break the cycle of, well, like, I have all of this. Like, let's go crazy. Let's try to to to, to make more money or try to do appearance fees. Like, no, like, that money is going to be invested into making sure that the process is on a higher level but the same, if right. that makes sense. So you just want your process to match the outcome you've reached, right? Yes. So this is a section I like to bring up where I kind of nerd out a little bit. Okay. So uh, Pacific Island descent. Yes. You know about that. So yeah. do you know when the last person from the islands actually medaled? I wonder. Or who it is? Uh, from New Zealand, I feel like. All right. Well, 97, Beatrice. Fal, fal, mm -hmm. That's what we're going to go with for right now. Fal, fal, me no. There you go. She's I, rock with I, I know that. Something like that, yeah. So, like, what does that talk to me about that? Uh, what does that feel like? You held them it, down. It feels so good. It feels so good because um, I'm not going to lie. There are times where I forget. Like, it's, it's, it's big in my name, right? My, my heritage. But, I'm also black. And so like when I'm presented to the world, I am a black woman. Um, and so it's it's sometimes hard to be within those circles because sometimes I'm like, I don't really fit in. And it's not because people don't let me fit in. It's just because obviously I am I am a half of a whole, right? Um, and so like when I, when I do see women who look like me, they aren't Polynesian. They are black women. They're, you know, like Gia Smallwood. I believe that's her name. Her last name, or Gia? She she was uh, the former record holder. It's you know, um, it's people like that. Uh, oh, small uh, word. There we go. Yeah. Okay. I said Talk to right. me. Put some respect on her name. Let's get it. You know, or you know, Whitney Ashley. Like those are people that I looked up to. But then as I as I grew through the process, I was like, I've never like it's been so long. Like you said, 1997. I was like, I haven't seen. How old were you then? Uh, I was still a thought. A, a twinkle, if a thought, a twinkle you know what I'm in your father's eye. Hey, <laughs> my mom still hadn't went to go see a man about a horse yet. Okay, <laughs> so so we don't know. Um, I can't play with you tonight. It's too late. I'm sorry, or too early. <laughs> but um, 
or like say Lala Sua, um, who's at UCLA with Art Venegas. So like I did some research and I was like, I was like, that's crazy. Like that's another part of me that's not being represented. And so when I, when I came and I was like, if I, if I do well enough, I was like, I was like, this doesn't only just mean like for, you know, me being black, but also Pacific Island, Pacific Islander, because I was like, we got to be the biggest, strongest people. But they just keep pushing them into different stuff. I'm just like, take them out of rugby. Not everybody can be good in rugby. Not everybody can be good in football. Your girls are a little on the heavy side. There's no reason why we're putting them all in volleyball. I'm like, put them on the track. Let's go. Put them in the ring. Let's go. Because I'm sitting there and I'm like, I have seen 12-year-olds carry commercial freezers on their back into the house. Are you preaching right now? No, I'm just saying, though, because that's literally what happens. Like, I was sitting there. Like, I was sitting there at 12 years old. My mom was like, move this couch. I'm like, me? By myself? And she's like... You got it. And all of a sudden I had it. And I'm just like, we're out there. We just, they need, they need to find somebody who's like them to get into it. Yeah. And so like to, to be that person is special because I'm like, bring them all over cuz, bring them all over. Like everybody. I'm, t- I'm talking flood the gates. Just, just get them in the ring. Just something. Hey man, you just gave me the goosebumps. <laughs> You just took me to church. I like it. I'm about to say really quickly as well. So it seems like you're very animated. Like, I love that about you. I promise you I do. And maybe not all your competitors are the same way. So Team USA, we typically stick together. Mm-hmm. Going into those last few throws, did you, and your, I mean, did you and your teammates have any words of encouragement? Like, did you say anything to Val? Did you say anything to you? Like, talk to me about that. Was there any camaraderie there or was it just like? Blood in the water. Exactly. It was blood in the water. Um, there was, um, you know, Val gave me a hug after my 69. And I also, um, when I hit my 65, I was just happy to be there. And so I think, I think it's a thing of, you need to wait for me to get mine before I can say anything to you because we're still competitors. Mm -hmm. So it's like, she handled her business in the first round. She knew what she was doing. I'm not going to talk to you right now because I'm still in the water. Like I, I haven't found dry land yet. No, like I can't be happy for you. I'm gonna have to leave you alone. So when I when I finally made that final and I seen that she she you know she's doing another six day, I was like, there you go. Like that's how you do it. And I gave her a fist bump and like that's how it is. You know what I'm saying? So it's not that there was like blood in the water type of situation, but it's like there's an understanding of there is respect, but at the same time, it's like we are playing with people's money. So we gotta be respectful of that too. All right, so, yeah. So. Well, thank you for joining us and, and, and continued success and congratulations. And I really feel like you're just scratching the surface on your career, right? I mean, you talk about the amenities and, you know, how you can uh, improve not only your training, but your travel and all things in preparation to uh, this Parisian pursuit. And, you know, we look forward to seeing you, uh, both the Pacific Islander uh, side and also the uh, African-American side uh, in all your uh, glory, both animated and unanimated uh, in Paris. Congratulations. And we learned something new today to all you kids listening. If you want to throw far, make your backside real tight. Bro, like this. The squeeze, Jack. All right, we done. We done. We out of here. Congratulations again, man. Thank you.